it's not real easy to put together a set in a show like this. Like I didn't realize that when we started. I think you've done a great job here. Oh, although, thanks. to be honest, I think we could make better use of the space. Oh. Uh, Let me show you. Okay. So by increasing the physical distance between us, we're adding emotional distance, which is important. Okay. You'll see. Go ahead and ask your first question. Uh, all right. Uh, so, John, where are you from? See how much better that was? Not really, actually. Um, but we can roll with it. Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, the show where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug Stevenson, developer advocate with the Firebase team, and on the show with me today is John Mensing. John. Hello. Thanks for being here. Great the to be here. Fire basement with me. Yes. What do you think of the place? Uh, it is very nice. It reminds me of home. Oh, wow. Well, uh, I'm surprised you have a home that looks like this. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, John, what is your role on the Firebase team? So I'm a product manager, and I work on our messaging-related features, most notably Firebase Cloud Messaging. OK. So Firebase Cloud Messaging is uh, what you use for server-to-device messaging, right? Exactly. So what yes. kind of things have developers been doing with that lately? Well, um, we've been working all the time to upgrade um, all parts of Firebase Cloud Messaging, especially the analytics and the console features uh, that allow developers to to send through their, the UI. Uh, and we've been launching new features all the time. I'm very proud that we recently launched uh, some new reporting and analytics for the API sends that uh, give developers insight into the performance of their sends from send to open. OK, so performance meaning like how effective they are at yes. reaching their end users. Exactly. So um, it, it's really important for developers to understand what happens after they send their message, right? Like, does it actually get delivered to the user? And does the user end up interacting with that and then going on to the app and doing the things uh, that, that the developer wants them to do? So we've recently introduced some new features that help developers figure that out. But I'm curious to know what's new in Firebase cloud messaging, or mm -hmm. you, you said the messaging features of Firebase. Well, uh, we did recently launch a new product called Firebase in-app messaging, okay. which is, uh, like it sounds, it's a way for developers to show a message to their in-app users after some sort of a trigger. So for example, if I were uh, a, an app owner of a game, uh, and I had a user who maybe either passed or didn't pass a given level, I could show an appropriate message to that user saying, you know, maybe even giving them a hint in the case where they didn't pass the level or saying congratulations in the case where they did. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a sort of, of um, flexible uh, kind of messaging system that we've, we've recently launched. OK, OK. So that's different than cloud messaging because right. cloud messaging is server to device, but this right. is entirely on device. Yes. Yeah, so so we, we do send the message from the server to device, but uh, the way that the user experiences that is when they're already in the app, as okay. opposed to a remote notification, which is is sort of like uh, shown to the user whether or not they're using the app. I see, I see. So like if you have a chat app, right, right. and you have all the messages coming in, even if the app isn't open, yeah. you use FCM for that. You use messaging. FCM for that. But in-app messaging is for, like you said, triggers for when events happen within the app, right. and something should respond to that. Correct. So yeah, they're already in the app with in-app messaging. And uh, FCM is for when they're not. OK. Well, I'd like to give that a try. I've used right. FCM, but I haven't used in-app messaging yet. So uh, get out there and use that if you haven't already. We'd love your feedback. So speaking of games, it seems like a lot of the people who I have on the show here are really into games of some sort. And mm -hmm. I'm into, everyone here knows I'm into retro games. And I brought a plastic guitar on here and played it once, because I love the rhythm games. Uh, but what do you enjoy? What's your game of choice? Uh, I've been through multiple phases. Uh, I definitely got into a rock band phase, and it's my favorite thing in the world to do. Uh, now I'm playing console games. I'm playing Nintendo games, Nintendo Switch games. Okay. Playing the Mario stuff. Okay. Yeah, just all over the place, though. I don't discriminate. So games are mostly an indoor thing, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're playing sports. Uh, what about outdoor stuff? What do you do that's outdoors? 
Uh, well, I am mostly a pretender when it comes to outdoor things. I do a lot of planning to go outdoors. So I, I like to purchase outdoor equipment and then store it. And then imagine yourself. And then think about it. what it would be like to go camping. Uh, I've been camping maybe two times uh, since I moved to San Francisco and I had a, an amazing time and uh, you know went fishing and did, did all the things that one is supposed to do. But the amount of effort and preparation that went into those camping trips like greatly exceeded the amount of time I actually yeah. spent camping. Yeah. I, I know yeah. what you mean. And the stuff does not fit neatly into my very small apartment in San Francisco. So I've got a, a small room that is very expensive to maintain that is just full of things that I don't use. Mm -hmm. But you get to practice your Tetris skills trying to right. stack everything up. It is. It, in, and that is, you know, twofer, right? So play the games and, and get to think about camping at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I just uh, spent the weekend with a buddy of mine who's going camping through... Uh, like Scotland, mm. so he's he's serious. He's buying the whole tent and the and the whole backpack and all the gear and. I can't imagine a better place to do it. Uh, yeah, well, it is a it is a beautiful country. It is. And he was showing me some uh, videos and, and and pictures of that, and I'm like, wow, I'd like to do that. Except for the actual being out outdoors for like a week and a half. I don't know if I could do that. I think I'm a little, I'm a little too indoorsy yeah, <laughs> to, no, to appreciate just, that. I think by car is a good way to experience Scotland, also. So what do you do when you're camping? There's like, do you do fishing or anything like that? Yes, I do. I I have caught fish, so I'm officially a fisherman. I wouldn't say I'm an expert by any means, but that was one of the big elements of my camping trip was to go go fly fishing. Mm -hmm. And I think I caught a total of about three fish, which were <laughs> in reality there was something like this, but no one's gonna sure, know. Sure. Yeah. Well, every time no we tell the story, know. it gets yeah. bigger, right? No one's gonna yeah. know if I just say <laughs> huge. And I also have on here that you've done crabbing. I have. What's uh, that all about? Crabbing is, it is a lost art. So what you do is you take a net. Well, there's many ways to do it, but what, what I did was to take a net and to put something kind of stinky in the middle of that net, such as like squid or chicken parts or whatever, and sure. toss that out into, the, into a body of water where crabs live and wait for them to crawl into the net to get the... The stuff and then you know, you pull them out okay okay yes. i didn't realize that's how you caught that's a crab. how you catch well that's how i think that's how everyone catches crabs including the big commercial oh, commercial okay. crabbers but they they're better at it than i am oh, they have better stinky stuff i think they have like more and better traps and they do it in better places and they know what they're doing and i don't so right well you can fake things. it right <laughs> that well the amount of skill that it takes to throw a net into the water is the amount of skill that i have okay yeah i yeah. could probably manage that too right just enough physical strength to toss a net. Yeah, I have it. I have the requisite physical strength to throw a net into the water. All right. Well, that's all we have time for part one of this interview with John Mensing. Be sure to join us here tomorrow for part two, right here on the Firebase channel on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe to get notified when that happens. And I'll see you here next time. I think it's going to set up some dramatic tension for me to be a distance away. Uh, uh, are you sure about this? Yes. <laughs>